sheltered under the wings of the Almighty. You have become our habitation, our refuge, our strong fortress, Lord. No weapon formed against us will prosper. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you this morning. We thank you for your faithfulness, for your love and your goodness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, that even in our flawed conditions, you declare us righteous. Praise God. We thank you, Father, for that gift of becoming your children, heirs of salvation. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name this morning. In Jesus' name, everybody say praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Suzanne and Peter. Great to have Peter back with us again for a, for a week. Praise the Lord. We'll take what we get. Hallelujah. Thank you, Tim. As always, great job of opening and kind of setting the tone for the Holy Spirit to move. And it's a blessing. Praise the Lord. Great to see Roy and Karen again. God bless you all. Amen. Praise God. Great to have people coming back. Amen. We know it's difficult, but it's, it's, uh, it's always a blessing to see a familiar face again. Amen. And of course, Don and Darlene, back from Arizona for a while. Appreciate seeing them again. And Yvette, God bless you. Glad you're feeling better and back with us today. Praise the Lord. All of you, amen. We appreciate you being here and coming out and trusting the Lord to, to be with uh, the body of Christ, to be with your brothers and sisters in the Lord. We appreciate that. Eric and Rita back there, praise God. Bless you guys. Praise the Lord. I love, Rita loves to worship, and I love to listen to her worship. Praise the Lord. It blesses me. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Amen. So, praise God. God bless all of you. Thank you again, uh, Mike and Suzanne, as always, uh, doing all the stuff that needs to be done. Amen. Yeah, give them a hand. They deserve it. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. There's so much that they do that we don't, you know, actually understand or see, but yet it's happening every every minute during the service and during the week. Uh, they're, they're setting things up and preparing things and responding to uh, emails and text messages and Facebook stuff and all the things that I struggle with, praise the Lord. Amen. But God bless them. I appreciate them being here today. Praise the Lord. And thank you all. Amen. It's been a weird week. I think for everybody probably the, the, the weeks are weird, but uh, amen. God is in control. Hallelujah. We just have to keep our focus on him. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody here know the difference between Dubai and Abu Dhabi? Well, people in Dubai don't like the Flintstones, but people in Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> I've read that somewhere. It must be true. Amen. Here's a, here's a good uh, saying. Give a man a gun and he'll rob a bank. Give a man a bank and he'll rob everybody. Praise the Lord. It's been my experience with banks, praise the Lord. But yesterday, on a, uh, another note, a guy knocked on my door. You know, there's a lot of donations going around trying to help people out, which is a good thing. But yesterday, a guy knocked on my door, and he asked for a small donation towards the local swimming pool, so I gave him a glass of water. <laughs> praise the Lord. Okay, well, praise God. You know, women call me ugly until they find out how much money I have. And then they call me ugly and poor. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So, thank the Lord. God is good. Now, I'm just going to, I want to, uh, last week I kind of talked about some of the things that Suzanne had preached on the week before. And by the way, that was a fantastic message. If you didn't get it, you should archive it. Go back. It's uh, two weeks ago. And it was a fantastic message. It really was. It blessed me. And it really stirred up some things in, in me by the Holy Spirit. And she had shared a little bit of that when we had talked, when I had asked her to preach for me uh, that, that Sunday. And uh, she had shared a, a little bit of it. And it kind of triggered some things in my thoughts. And then when I heard the message, it really just opened up some things that, that I hadn't really thought about uh, that much. And, and so I'm going to kind of talk about some of that again this week because you know I can be obsessive. Praise the Lord. Uh, but that's just the way it is, and I, I just couldn't get it off my mind. And so I'm looking at, you know, we're talking about uh, all, 
all that's around us and how it affects us, the natural things that we see and experience and interact with all the time. And yet, there's a place that we can be in the Lord that's always right now, because he's always right now. He is the I am. He's not, you know, what it was a long time. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So wherever, whenever we're operating in the spirit, we are in the present. We are in the right now, because we're with, with God, who, who is eternal. So he doesn't have a you know, a past, a future, except in a human way of looking at it from a human perspective. So that's kind of what I want to talk to you about. And I want to start with uh, John chapter 15 and verse 5, Suzanne. And I've got a bunch of scriptures today, so she's going to be working her little fingers to the bone, praise the Lord. Hope you have a you know, spa planned up for the future, amen, for them fingers. But anyway, so John chapter 15 and verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Now I want to just preface this by first of all saying this is Old Testament. And I know, you know, over the years I've struggled with trying to get into that place, to be in Christ, you know, to be able to bear fruit. Because he says, he's the vine, we're the branches. He that abideth in me will bear much fruit. So the kind of the the mental way of looking at that is I've got to somehow abide in him. I've got to get into him and stay into him and not let anything pull me away from that. But again, remember, this is pre-cross. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Amen? So with that in mind, let's go to Isaiah chapter 27, verses 2 and 3. He's the vine, we're the branches. And if we abide in him, we're going to bring forth fruit. Praise the Lord. He said, in that day, sing ye unto her a vineyard of red wine. I, the Lord, do keep it. I will water it every moment, lest any hurt it. I will keep it night and day. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. Praise the Lord. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time of accepted, and in the day of salvation. I have secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Praise the Lord. So the vineyard in, in uh, <clears throat> Isaiah was a symbol of the people of Israel. How many know we are the true Israel come down out of heaven? Amen. I'm not saying Israel is just banded or discarded or anything else. I'm just saying he said the true Israel are the believers in Christ, whether they're Jewish or or Gentile, or whatever, amen. And so the vineyard was a symbol of the people of Israel, or uh, the people that are believers in God, who have God as their, uh, as their father, amen. So the vineyard was a symbol of the people of Israel, and in their midst, the true vine, amen, would stand. All right, So look, and let's look at this in John chapter 15 now, 1 through 5 this time. We'll read the first five verses of John 15. So the vineyard is a symbol of the people of God, and in their midst, the true vine, amen, that would stand. Praise the Lord. So he, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. He's the gardener. Amen. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me. And I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. And he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. So the branch is the symbol of the individual believer, each of us. Amen. And so the song of the vineyard that we read back in Isaiah 27 is also the song of the vine and every branch because we are in the vineyard. Amen? So let's look again at Isaiah 27, verses 2 and 3. In that day sing ye unto her a vineyard of red wine. I, the Lord, do keep it. He keeps the vineyard. I will water it every moment, lest any hurt it. I will keep it night and day. So in one sense, it's true. There is no believer who doesn't always abide in Jesus. Otherwise, there wouldn't be any true new life. Amen? Abiding in Jesus 
isn't a work that our minds have to be engaged in every second. Christ, who is our life, the scripture says, he dwells in us, and his presence maintains our consciousness that we are in him. Yeah. Amen? And so he wouldn't give us the command to abide in him, abide in me, he says, without giving us the grace and the power to do it. We have the Father as the husbandman to keep us from falling. Praise the Lord. Psalms 121, verses 7 and 8. I want to encourage you this morning. This is, it's not all mental. This stuff is not intellectual stuff. It's, it, I mean, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. It, it's, it's, it's about the Spirit. It's about what God has done for us, not what we're going to do for Him, not what we can do to get His approval or anything else. It's about this one-way God who loves us so much. Amen. He cannot turn His back on us. He cannot turn away from us. No matter how much we fail, no matter how much we screw up, He's still there. Amen. Watering us every day, seeing to it, amen, that we're protected, amen, from the things that would come upon us, right? Amen. So in Psalms 121, 7 and 8, he says, The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. We ought to say praise the Lord. Amen. I know there's stuff all around us, but the Lord is going to preserve us, our coming in and our going out. Amen. That's what God does for us every day, every moment of every day. Amen. We just need to learn to believe that abiding in Christ every moment, day and night, is what God has prepared for those who love Him. Amen. It's what God is doing for us, not what we can do. Not what we can do to get into Jesus, but what God has done to put us in Jesus. Amen. Look at Numbers chapter 13 and verse 30. See, I think if, the, if we would spend less time worrying about getting there and more time rejoicing and being there, we would see a greater reward. We would see more fruit. Because then it's the Lord that's doing it and not us trying to achieve something, but us just being celebratory or praising God for what he's already done. Amen. Amen. And so Caleb, this is, you know the story here. This is after they had sent spies into the promised land. And God had told him, go in there. It's a land that's filled with milk and honey. Everything's there for you. You don't have to do anything except show up. All you got to do is just go. Amen. And I'll give it all to you, right? Well, the spies come back and said, yeah, but there's COVID-19 in the land. You know, there's giants over there. There's junk. There's bad stuff happening. There's people going goofy and crazy. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Praise the Lord. Verse, uh, chapter 14 and verse 8, still in numbers here. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Praise the Lord. Jesus is our promised land. He is our rest. He's our Sabbath rest. Praise the Lord. He is the truth, amen, the reality, amen, of this natural thing that they were going through. But he is, this was all pointing to Jesus. It was all pointing to us and our relationship with him. Amen. It's about casting ourselves on the Word of God. Amen. Jesus is the portion of every believer. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 8, 38 and 39. Praise God. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, not disease, not pandemics, uh, not, not bigotry, not hatred, not vengeance, n none of these things. And we're seeing it, we're experiencing it, and, and we know it's, it's a reality, right, in the natural. But he said none of those things present or to come will, will harm you. Nothing can get between you and God, no matter how chaotic things might get, no matter how, how bad it might be, nothing can come between us and God. Amen? Not height, not depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Listen, that's a message this world needs to hear. Everybody needs to know, God, regardless of what people think, God loves you. God cares about you. God wants you blessed. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
So when things look bad and our faith seems to fail, remember the song of the vineyard. I, the Lord, do keep it. I will water it every moment, lest any hurt it, lest anything would come to hurt it. I will keep it night and day. 24 hours a day, God will keep it. Praise the Lord. John 4.14. I mean, you can get depressed easily in these times because there is just so much depressing things happening and fearful things and frightening things and uncertainty and all of that that goes on in the world. Amen. But we can have peace in the midst of the storm. We just have to keep the focus, amen, where the focus needs to be. Amen. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him. He says, I'm going to water this plant. I'm going to water this garden. I'm going to see to it that that vine produces branches that will then produce fruit. Amen. And so whosoever drinketh of the water that I'll give him shall never thirst. But the water that I give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Praise the Lord. We have, amen, the watering agent, amen, for the garden. Amen. We It's here to produce fruit. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. He's talking about the church, us, the body. With the washing of the water by the word. Praise God. See, God keeps the branch night and day. He waters it every minute. That's telling us there is an unbroken relationship between us and God. That he produced. That he provided. He's the guy that gardens, right? He's the one that plants the garden, amen? He planted Jesus into this world, right? And we are the branches. We are the result of that, amen? We're growing out from Jesus, amen? And God waters it every minute. It's telling us this relationship can't be broken. Tim talks about it almost every Sunday, and thank God that he does. We are one with him. We need to realize that God is never going to leave us or forsake us. Amen. We, have, we can have confidence that no matter what we're coming up against, God is with us in the middle of all of it. It may look difficult for us, but nothing's too hard for God. Amen. Nothing's impossible for the Lord. Amen. Exodus chapter 16 and verse 4. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven. You know, they were complaining. They didn't have anything to eat. They, they, Tim talked about it this morning. God fed them. All that time they were in the wilderness. Every day. Right? And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or in my words or not. Our life becomes an interchange of God's daily grace and our praise. That's what he's telling us about in the Old Testament. He's speaking to us in the New Covenant. He's speaking to spiritual truth. Amen. And the truth is that our life becomes this interchange, just as it was with Israel. They had to come, and every day they'd get the manna. God rained it down to them, but they had to go up and pick it up. And they couldn't have enough for tomorrow. They could only have enough for today. Tomorrow was another day. Tomorrow you had to go and get your manna again the following day, right? And it's talking about this interchange between God daily giving us grace, daily blessing us and protecting us and providing for us, and the result is we just praise the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Made the house payment this month. Thank you, Lord. We were able to pay the rent. Thank you, Lord. The car payment came. Thank you, Lord, that the, the child didn't die. It got sick, but it was okay. It got healed. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that even though it looks like it's bad everywhere, Amen. There's still good coming up. We're still seeing the blessings and the benefits of God. We're still seeing the fruit, amen, of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. So Psalms chapter 68, verse 19. You didn't think I was kidding, did you? Praise the Lord. 68, 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Selah, or meditate on that for a little bit. Think about that. Amen. And then Psalms 61 and verse 8. So he provides for us every day, right? And so 
I will sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows or live according to your word. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus, you know, he said, I am the true manna that comes down from heaven. Praise the Lord. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the real bread. I'm the real deal. You, you, your, your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and they died. He said, I'm the truth. Look at this in uh, John 6, 48 to 51. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. For I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and they're dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven. He's saying this is what that was all about. This is the truth of what that was about. Amen. That a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the daily renewal of the miracle of the manna is the type and shadow of our daily relationship with Jesus, who is the life and the light of the world. Amen. The spiritual heavenly life is as unbroken and continuous as the manna that was given every day. Our relationship, that's what he's telling us, it's the same. Every day they got the bread. Every day they thank God they got something to eat. And he's saying that's the, that's the, the physical uh, symbol or type of the spiritual reality, which is our relationship is unbroken. Every day, amen, it's continuous. The manna comes every day. Grace comes for us every day. Grace, no matter how bad we screw up yesterday, no matter how bad we might mess up today, grace is there. It's sufficient, amen, for whatever our physical or human, uh, you know, shortcomings may be, amen. It's continuous, and we abide in Him every day, all day. The Lord is our portion. Praise the Lord. It's, it's living a day at a time. A moment at a time. Living in the now. I am abiding in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, it's not a matter of feeling. It's not a question of growth or strength in yourself or in religious, religious behavior or religious acts. Amen. If you're a believer, you are in Christ now. Praise the Lord. Amen. In that little word, now, lies one of the deepest secrets of the life of faith. It's the secret of rest. The secret of victory. Yes. Amen. We can say, Jesus is to me, at this moment, all that God gave Him to be. Yes. Amen. Life, strength, peace, healing, prosperity, wholeness, health. Amen. We just have to hold still and rest and realize it. For this moment, I have what I need. At this moment, everything that God has provided for me is mine. I have it. It's available to me. It's right here. And so as my faith sees how I am in Christ through God, and instead of trying to find out a way to abide in Christ from moment to moment, instead of trying to figure this thing out, how am I going to do this? What about tomorrow? What am I going to do tomorrow? Right? Just, just worry about now. The manna has been provided right now, today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow, God will take care of tomorrow. Amen? But I'm trying to find a way to abide in Christ from moment to moment. Now just remember, the gateway is to abide in Him at this present moment. See, we're, we're worrying about, how, can I abide in, will I abide in Him tomorrow? Will I abide in Him five minutes from now, ten minutes from now? He's saying, no, no. The, the key to this, the guy, the, the gateway to this is to abide now, right now. That's what all you can really control is this moment. Abide in Him. Be conscious of your abiding in Him right now, this present moment. Instead of wasting our time and our effort trying to get into a state that will last, remember, it's Christ Himself who can keep you and is waiting to do so. So we act by faith in the present moment. I am in Christ. I am in Him. I'm abiding in Him this moment. Yes. Yes. See, the life of, of always abiding is entered into by doing it now. In the moment. The life of abiding in Him isn't about me planning on how I'm going to do it tomorrow. The life of abiding in Him is of being aware of the fact right now. Here's another type and shadow. David had been anointed the king of Judah. And the other tribes, they were still following Ashibabeth, who was Saul's son. 
Now Abner, who was Saul's captain, was determined to lead the tribes of Israel to submit to David, who was God's appointed king over the whole nation. So look at 2 Samuel chapter 3, uh, verses 17 and 18. So David is the one that's supposed to be king, but there's, there's another one claiming to be king. So David is actually only over a small part of Israel, but God has said, you're the king of all of them. Right? And so Abner's going to try to get everybody to come together, come into an agreement that he's the king. David is the king. Let's all get in agreement about this, right? And so he goes out and he's trying to uh, uh, get the, uh, the whole nation to follow David. And so in 2 Samuel chapter 17 and 18, Abner had communicated with, had communication with the elders of Israel saying, you sought for David in times past to be your king or king over you. Now then, do it. For the Lord has spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel out of the hand of the Philistines and out of the hand of their enemies. Now, we know David is a type of Christ. And, you know, God had said that there will always be an heir on the throne. Heir of David, right? And so David, Jesus obviously is in that genealogy. But he says, Now then, do it. You, you said you wanted to have a king. You wanted him to be your king. Now, make him your king. Right? And so, 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 3. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over all of Israel. Now that's an example of abiding completely, or full abiding in what the results are. Amen? When everybody, when, when he is the king, when he's your king, when you're fully abiding in him, amen, then you get the results of that. It's a type of the promise that we have to trust Jesus for victory over every enemy. David defeated all the enemies. He protected the people of Israel. The Lord has spoken. Do it. Our hope and our expectation is in him and him only. Luke chapter 1, 69 through 75. Luke 1, 69 through 75. Hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abram, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Praise the Lord. Second Samuel again, 3, 17 and 18. So here's what God is saying to us today. Abner communicated with the elders of Israel saying you sought for David in times past to be the king over you. Now then, do it. Or do it now. That's the message. Yeah. Do it now. Yeah. Be conscious of your abiding in him. Do it now. Make him the king now. Yes. Amen. Amen. Do it now. Now then do it. He says. Abide in Jesus now. In his word. In his promise. It's the work of a moment. Think about when you got saved. How long did it take you to get saved? It may have taken you a while to come to the decision, but to get saved, it was in a moment. It just took a moment. All you had to do was agree. All you had to do was say, yes, Lord. Amen. It's the work of a moment. Just as Christ's acceptance of us is the work of a moment. Praise the Lord. We are, we are saved. We're not working to get saved. We abide in Christ. We are in Christ right now. We just need to be conscious of it. Because that's how the fruit develops. That's how the fruit comes on the branch because the branch is connected to the vine. Yeah. And God is watering us. God is the husband. He's the gardener seeing to it that nothing, no weeds, no thorns, nothing's going to come in and choke out the fruit on that branch. Amen. Jesus has you and he holds you and he abides. Amen. He abides in me now. Say now. Now. now, not later, not when I get good, not when I get better, not when I don't mess up anymore, but now. now. Praise the Lord. The blessing of the present moment is passed on to the next moment. 
Hebrews 13 and verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? It's the unchanging Jesus, amen, that we're linked to. Yes. Praise the Lord. It, he's in us. It's the power of divine life. Amen. It's unbroken continuity that takes over. When we are conscious of it. Amen? The now becomes unbroken continuity. It becomes continuous. That's eternity. That's what we're going to experience someday. We can experience it now. Heaven can come to earth now if the branches will abide. Amen. Be aware of their abiding in the vine. Amen. The do it now of the present moment is the beginning of the ever present now. I'm going to say it again. The do it now of the present moment is the beginning of the ever-present now. It's the continuity that leads us into eternity. We have eternity within our grasp. But you can't have eternity for next week. It's now. It's always now. There is no next week in eternity. In heaven, there's no next week. It's always right now. And He's given us that by abiding in Christ. We have that ability to have that same continuity of abiding in Him now Amen. And don't worry about tomorrow or don't worry about 10 minutes from now. Abide in Him now because that's the gateway to the continuity or the gateway to continuous abiding. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's the mystery of the glory of eternity. Abide in Christ. Do it now. We have eternity in our soul, in our lives, in our bodies. We have Jesus, the eternal one. We become one with Him. We are eternal beings right this moment. Yes. Now our bodies may, if Jesus doesn't come before our, our physical death, then our bodies will go to the grave. But that's not us. Yes. That's just a vehicle. That's just a thing that we use to get around in and do things here on earth. Yes. Amen. And we'll get a resurrected body that matches our spirit that's eternal as well. Yes. And we can, we can experience that now. Yes. Hebrews 7.22 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Suzanne. Wow. Wow. Amen. I mean, it's, it trips some things in my mind. And I'm telling you, the now, the, the immediate, is eternal. It's, it's what we have. And if we understand, we're not trying to get into Jesus. We're not trying to abide in Him. We're not hanging on and hoping I can abide in Him and He abides in me. No, that was done at the cross. That was done when we were born again. We became one. But we have to be conscious of it. Otherwise, we trail off on these sidetracks of human behavior and, and ignorance and craziness. And I mean, we're all capable of it. And we know it. Some of us more than others. But I'm just saying, if I can focus on the now, I'm in Jesus. I'm in eternity this moment. I don't have to wait to die physically. I can have it right here and right now. And I can experience the blessing of that. Heaven comes to earth. Eternity comes to time. And what is miracles if not just a suspension of time? Right? I mean, it just lifts you out of the moment. Amen? So you, you've got a, a, a sickness or something. That's, the doctors say, well, you got, you know, it's going to take a couple weeks to get over this. And here's this and here. No, I don't. Not if I'm abiding in Him. I'm already healed. I'm all, heaven has already come. Healing has already taken place. Amen? So by, by so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament or a guarantee of a better covenant. Amen? So the scripture talks about the old covenant having faults. Israel did not continue in the old covenant. And so God said he regarded them not. Why? Because they didn't abide in the covenant. They didn't keep their end of the bargain. Right? Look at the Hebrews 8, 7, and 9. Chapter 8, 7, and 9. Oh, I, I, I just can't get past this. We have so much that we're not aware of. Our salvation covered everything. God left nothing undone. Nothing. It's just a question of us being in it. Conscious of it. 
For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. In other words, if it had been perfect, then there wouldn't be any reason for a second covenant or for Jesus to come, right? For finding fault with them, he's talking about Israel now, the Lord said, Behold, the day comes, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Because they had a responsibility, and because they didn't keep their end of the bargain, God could not keep His end. So He didn't regard them as His. Get it? So, the new covenant is free from the faults of the old covenant. What were the faults of the old covenant? The people who could not keep the law. Who could not do everything that God said they had to do in order for Him to do what He wanted to do for them. Alright? Hebrews 8 and verse 10. For this is the covenant that I make with the house of Israel after those days. That's us he's talking about now, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind. I'll write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God. And they shall be to me a people. God secures our faithfulness to him. And his to us. I mean, this is the good news. That it's not up to us. Yes. To do anything but to believe that he's faithful. Yes. Amen. Yes. Verse 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. He's talking about, can anybody say praise the Lord? Yes. I'll be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities I will remember no more. He doesn't know anything about any of the stupid things you've done since you got born again. He refuses to know it. He refuses to hear it. To believe it. To know it. Amen. Two parties meet. And are eternally, excuse me, eternally united in the new covenant. Yes. God would faithfully fulfill his part so that we could confidently depend on God to pardon and accept and never forsake us. See, this covenant is all on God. The only part we play is to thank God. Yes. Amen. We are abiding in him. When Jesus said that, abide in me and I abide in you and you'll bear much fruit, he was, that was an Old Testament, an Old Covenant perspective that he was using. We cannot help but abide in him. He can't help but abide in us. He's given us his word. I'll never leave you or forsake you. Hey, we just need to be conscious of it. We just need to have an awareness. We need to have a now knowledge of God is with me. Just think about that. Every time you're confronted with an issue or a situation, if you had it in your mind first and foremost, God is for me. God is with me. He's not going to forsake me. He's not going to leave me. He's not going to let me be damaged. He's not going to let anything come against me. He's going to water me and protect me and provide for me. Then how much more fruit would we be seeing? How much more fruit would we be experiencing? The way God fulfills His guarantee is by us being one with Him. And having the fullness of God dwelling in our human nature. And taking us to be members of his own body. He is our all in all. Yes. All that we are, all that we do, is done in him. Amen. It's the glory of the new covenant. It's everlasting security. Amen. As we abide in Him and He in us, the promises, the blessings, they're realized in us. That's the promise of the new covenant. Jeremiah 32, verses 40 and 41. Jeremiah 32, 40 and 41. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. He's speaking about us. That I will not turn away from them to do them good. But I will, but will put my fear in their hearts or my awareness of God. Yes. Amen. First you have to believe that He is. Right? And He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So He said, I'm going to put the reality of my being in them. So that they'll know. There's a God. They may not understand theology, may not get all of that, but there's something in us that knows there is a God. There must be a God. That's what drew us to Him in the first place. 
You got to believe that he is. We may not know all the ins and outs of it, but the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us, right? And so put my fear in their hearts that they, may, that they won't depart from me or that they'll, they, they can't stop believing. Can anybody stop believing in God? No, you can, you can doubt, you can question, you can wonder why this, why that, but you can't stop believing in Him. You can't. It's in us. It's so much a part of us that no matter how angry we might get or frustrated we might get, we can't stop believing. It's like Peter said, to whom will we turn? Where are we going if it's not you? Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good. And I will plant them in this land, in this garden, hallelujah, surely with my whole heart and with my whole soul. This is God talking. So blessed is the man who realizes this. Blessed is the woman who grasps this and appropriates this and finds rest in the everlasting covenant. Rest. It's not about me. It's not about what kind of mood I'm in today. It's not. It's just can I focus on the now that I am in Him, even with all my flaws, even with all my screw-ups, even with all my shortcomings. Now, now I'm in Him. He's in me. Amen. I will bear fruit simply because I can't do anything but bear fruit if I'm abiding in Him. Colossians 3, verses 3 and 4. Praise God. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Our old nature, our old man, he's dead already as far as God's concerned. Amen? My life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. How can we not, if we're in him, when He appears, we have to appear with Him because we're in Him. We can't be separated from Him. Praise the Lord. Abide in me and I in you. I'm the vine. You're the branches. Bring forth fruit. See, this, this life is a life of perfect victory and rest. I know, but we're like, I know we are like the, 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 the guys who listen to the spies. You know, we listen to CNN, we listen to Fox News, whatever it is we're listening to, amen, and they're giving us an evil report, folks. Yeah. I'm not saying we shouldn't be aware of things, I'm just saying, don't let that be your last answer, don't let that be the bottom line. Yeah. Amen, there is a word that's more powerful than anything that the, the natural man can come up with. They all got ideas and things, and, and, and I mean, it hasn't worked yet. Right? I mean, has anybody seen any great breakthrough that has come from anybody? I mean, people come with good ideas and good plans, but it always gets screwed up because people then have to work that plan out. God's the one that's got the answer. He is the answer. He's the only answer to all of the problems that we face in this natural world. He is truth. He is righteousness. Amen. He's fair because he can't be anything else. We are all his children. Equal. Amen? You don't have one kid here and one kid here and you go, oh, this, this is a great kid here, but that's a jerk there. Just kick him off to the side. No, that's your kid. And even when he screws up, you're still loving him. You're still caring about him. You're still going to try to teach him the way of the Father. What's right? What's righteous? What's beautiful? Praise God. 1 John 2, 28. This life is supposed to be a life of perfect rest and victory. And it is as long as we're in the now. As long as we're conscious of our abiding in Him and Him in us. It's only when we deviate. It's only when we try to fix stuff. It's only when we try to figure it out and think we can do it a better way. Or we're going to do something to make God do something for me. It doesn't work that way. It's just, thank you for the manna. Praise God. See you tomorrow. I got everything for today I need. I got all of it. It's right here. All I got to do is tomorrow do the same thing. Yeah. I don't have to worry about tomorrow till tomorrow. Just abide in Him today. In the now. Praise the Lord. And now, little children. And now, little children. Abide in Him. That when He shall appear, we may, be, may have confidence and not be ashamed before Him at His coming. Yes. Expecting. Amen? So there's, there's Christians that are afraid of the rapture. And that's why. They're afraid they'll be ashamed. 
If you only knew, there is no shame. There can be no shame. He has fully embraced us and loved us. He's not coming back to judge us. He's not coming back to critique us. He's not coming. He said he has his church is without spot and without wrinkle. He did that by the washing of the water of the word. Not, not what we did, what he did. He made us accepted in the beloved. Amen. I don't know what it'll be like. I don't know what the rapture will be like. I know it's going to be glorious for us. The only thing we have to fear, and I think Franklin Roosevelt said it, is fear itself. Just let the devil mess with your head. Praise the Lord. Now, little children, abide in him so that when he appears, we have confidence and won't be ashamed before him as he's coming. John 15, 7 and 8. This is the last scripture here. John 15, verses 7 and 8. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you will, and it'll be done unto you. So if you believe what I'm saying this morning, you see, all you got to do is ask. Right? Because you are abiding in him. You can't be anywhere else if you're born again. You, there is no other place to be except in him and he in us. So ask what you will, and it'll be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified. Here's how God gets glorified. By us being blessed. By us being, bearing fruit. By us prospering. By us receiving healing. Amen? By us, you know, being delivered from bondages and so forth. Amen? Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. Verse 16. You have not chosen me. How about that? See, nobody comes to the Father except the Spirit draws him. And you were in Christ before the foundation of the world, even if you didn't know it. You had to have been or you wouldn't be in him today. See, there's an unbroken chain here. You didn't choose me. I thought I did, Doc. I thought I searched for you. I thought I finally came to the end of myself and I said, Oh, God, are you out there somewhere? And God said, Yeah, I mean, I've been trailing you for the last 30 years. I've been on you, I've been on you like a dog, you know, trying to hunt you down and get you to turn. And we thought, We just discovered God. No. God's been on on our trail from the day we were born because he knew that we would come to him. We would receive him. Yes, Amen? So I, you didn't choose me. I chose you and ordained you that you would go and bring forth fruit. Now, if God chose me and ordained me to bear fruit, how am I not going to bear fruit? I can't, I'm not stronger than God. I'm not more powerful than God. I just got to have sense enough to realize what he's done. And it's automatic. Jeez. Amen? It's automatic. You know, we're in here this morning and worshiping, and I'm thinking, you know, I won't go into that, but we were here worshiping this morning, and the presence of God came. He was here all along. Yes. Amen? He just rewards us yes. because of our praise. He wants us to experience Him more than we want to experience Him, if you can believe it. You didn't choose me. I chose you. That you would go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That... Whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name. Now, how can you ask for anything? Now, I know we do the in Jesus' name stuff, and that's fine. But that isn't what he's really talking about. The fact that we are in Jesus, I bear his name. Yes. I bear his name. I am his brother. Amen? I, I'm, uh, you know, a, a, a joint heir. And all of us are. So whenever I pray with the uh, awareness that I'm abiding in him, I'm praying in Jesus' name. I don't have to put the thing on the end of it and, in Jesus' name. I, it's all right to do it. But the point I'm making is just whatever I ask yes. in the knowledge of my relationship with Him, I have what I ask for. Yes. It's a guarantee. He wanted me to have it before I had sense enough to ask for it. Yes. He'd already provided it. He'd already made a way. Amen? And so, so that fruit will remain. That whatsoever you ask, in the, in, ask of the Father in my name, He may give it to you. See, here's, I'm closing here, but there's hidden power that dwells in us. And we're always looking outside to get, and it's like Tim said it again, seek first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness and all these things. And instead of, instead of recognizing that we're abiding in him, the kingdom is in me and I'm in it, in Christ, amen, I'm trying to get stuff when if I would just concentrate on the fact that I am abiding in him, the stuff just comes. It's mine. It belongs to us. It's our inheritance. Amen? What, if he gave us Jesus, will he not give us all things? Yes. Why? Of course he will, because all things are in Christ. Yes. Your healing is already in you. Thank you. Your deliverance is already in you. Thank your prosperity is already in you. Yes. Just as your eternal salvation is already in you. It's already fixed. It's already done. We just have to be conscious of it. Yes. We have to be aware of the now factor. Christ, the glorified one, is our power to live to the glory of the Father. And the qualification to share in the glory of the Son. Father, I have shown them your glory. Now let them experience that glory. As I am in you, they in me, we are one. In other words, he's saying, give them a revelation. Help them to understand what they already have, whose they are, and what he has provided for them. Now. And in human terms, always. But as far as we're concerned, always is now. And now is always. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We talk about a good God. I mean, we, we can't even imagine in our human thinking the goodness of God and what he has provided and done for us. I mean, he's the only one that we truly can trust because we're human. And I might be in a good mood today and a bad mood tomorrow. God's always in a good mood when it comes to us. Amen. Give him one more hand. He's worth it. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. God bless all of you. Walk in the now. Realize who you are and what God has for you. And let's bear some fruit for this world to see. Amen. God bless you. In Jesus' name, you're dismissed. Thank you all for being here again today.